Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. You guys have been asking ever since the last video when I'm going to do more Halloween TF2 maps. And well, what better time than the season itself, right? Ooh, look at that over there. I've got Twisted Spire barely standing. And only on the edge of my vision does it light up in the fog. Almost like a light flickering in the window with the one occupant watching from above. Sorry, I am really easily distracted in this intro, but how can I not be with this cool Halloween aesthetic? Honestly, I feel like the TF2 art style often leads it to be overlooked in the world of creepy source maps, even as the concept itself is getting more attention. However, it lends itself perfectly to that, like, Hanna-Barbera Scooby-Doo style of spookiness. And spookiness, that's exactly what the holiday needs. Which is why it's no surprise that there's so many maps meant to celebrate the holiday. Sometimes even doing stuff like this, where it's effectively just a spookification of an existing map. The first one we're exploring today is King of the Hill Viaduct. And honestly, ooh. Huh, I just realized, uh... One of the decorations is uh, a couple of little critters hiding in the dark underneath the porch. Uh, that's alright, I'm not going to shine a light down there and uh, try and ruin the surprise of what you look like. I'd much rather save it for the appropriate moment, when I wake up to find you nibbling at my foot at the end of my bed. I'm really glad that as recognition of creepy and comfy grows more popular, so too does an appreciation for almost childish spookiness. Jack-o'-lanterns and plastic bats hanging from strings. I don't know, it's just, it goes together so well with Creepy and Comfy. I think because it takes you back to those childhood memories of the anticipation of Halloween. I mean, when you started seeing this stuff, you knew that spooky season was here and you were going to have a really fun month. You could say that even the very concept of the map itself lends itself to that. The idea of giving a makeover to a familiar space to give it this feeling. It sort of takes me back to, like, an elementary school, when they would put up all the decorations and suddenly even your own classroom could feel like something so much more exciting. I mean, being hyped for Halloween in school was a really awesome feeling. And I don't know, this, this just kind of brings me right back to that. Now, that's not the only reason I'm here, though. I have yet to see the giant glowing skull that I was promised in the thumbnail. A lot of these TF2 maps are ultimately just reskins, and I wouldn't have a whole lot to say about them. However, there are some totally original ones, as we saw last year. And maybe some secrets hidden on the existing ones. Oh, look at that. The rail bridge going over, train stopped on top. And apparently bringing a delivery of oversized pumpkins to be made into jack-o'-lanterns. And not that there's any shortage of those around here, but look. Caution, no trespassing. Huh. I wonder... I wonder if there would be just a wall down there, or... If maybe that doesn't hide something for those who try to no-clip. I'm pretty sure I've played maps before that did such things. Maps that had secrets out of bounds. I believe I remember a certain frog creature on another of these. If I went behind a door that was ajar. Now look at that, a giant bright full moon in the sky behind all these towers that uh, make very little logical sense, but I'm digging them. And apparently somebody's home as well. Warning, dead end. <laughs> oh look, there's more of these things under the deck on the enemy side. Don't they look like they're probably so cute? Like, the way they move around, they're like so shy and curious. I want one as a pet so badly. Uh, and what do we got outside the map? <laughs> the truck on the hill over there makes it feel like some kind of like universal ride or something. It's almost that tier of set dressing, but... Outside the map, they've got like this low, dark fog. Oh, leading into a spooky rail tunnel going into the mountain. 
Uh, that's a spooky sight, but uh, I can't imagine there's going to be too much more to find on the map itself. Uh, let's find something we can use to climb up into that so-called dead end. Yeah, this looks too accessible to not lead to something. Uh, okay, so what can we find? It's a TF2 map, so there's not really going to be any physics props around. Uh, we'll have to spawn something. Uh, you look like you'll do. Alright, now let's try picking you. Uh, we can't seem to pick you up. You are physics. You're moving when I hit you, uh, but picking you up from the center, you're a little big for that. Uh, that's okay. We always have yield fizz gun. I mean, grav gun. Uh, well, you won't be picked up by this, but maybe we can just smack you into place. There we go. Yep. And yep. Come on. Yep. Uh, maybe there is an invisible wall. All right, get out of here. I'm gonna have to bring in the big guns. Yep. And we're immediately forced out. Huh, maybe that's actually an exit. So, just how does one... See, uh, again, thumbnail featured a giant skeleton thing. And I'm quite certain that there's something still to be uncovered here. Something that I'm actually really intrigued by is the concept of Easter eggs in multiplayer maps. You know, something I've been intrigued by probably since Halo 3. It's not something that's usually done, but when it is, it has to be really subtle so that everybody doesn't just end up going forward in regular multiplayer games. Uh, well, we could try no clipping past this gate, right? In the worst case, we'll just no clip it to the skybox. Oops. And there's nothing. I'm actually now noticing that even on the side we started from, there's yet another rail line going into yet another tunnel, which leads me to believe it just makes like a U-shape around the entire map. There's no escaping, no matter what you do. I am actually going to go straight for no clip because I just realized that for all I know, any hidden areas are only accessible via some of the stuff that spawns during an actual event. I mean, it's not just a reskin. I'm pretty sure during Halloween events, there's all kinds of, like, ghosts and NPCs and such that spawn. All kinds of unique items. I do remember one year being chased by a certain headless horseman. So, no clip it is. Yep. Uh, alright, let's have a look around. Don't see anything below. Ooh, wait, wait. I do. That could just be the skybox, but they actually look more like islands. So let's get down there and have a... Oh my god, it's Skeletrex! He's huge! <sighs> Friggin' bonies. Alright, we're gonna have to go to the future. Uh, drop down. Sounds like I'm taking damage, so maybe we can't stay here for that long. And oh, this is... Uh... We could not stay for long. Okay. I'm gonna need some kind of protection. Alright, Skeletrex, I'm coming for you. Uh, wow, this is quite a bit more intense than an Easter egg I was expecting. Uh, well, we have, uh, we have the Swamp of Souls. Uh, some occasionally bubble up and escape into the sky, I see. Look, we can't even see faces in them. Oh, that's not steam. That's... Well, that's grandma. Oh, look. All these gnarled dead trees. All this island hopping, although it presumably would kill you quite quickly. You're probably meant to make a mad dash towards this teleporter, but... That's not what I'm here for. Nope, I have a date with the king. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's actually any real way there unless we do some real crazy platforming. A hip, a I wonder how you would actually access this during gameplay. Uh, uh, okay, think real hard back to gymnastics class. Uh, woo! 
I won all the awards. Everybody hated me for it. Anyway, let's climb these stairs. Okay, if these stairs can be clipped, any stairs can be clipped. All right. Who's up here in the Bone Palace? Wow, they really employed some advanced interrogation tactics against the Necronomicon. Uh... Oh, sorry, I was trying to put you out of your misery. Alright, well, maybe we're supposed to touch you? Uh, feels a little wrong, but... Hey, if you blow this place sky high, we both win, right? I suppose it's actually just a way out. Okay. But Skeletrex does not take escapees lightly. Those who leave are doomed to always carry the screams in their head. Well, never mind. I guess that was totally consequence-free. Uh, so consequence-free, in fact, we might as well go back, right? I want to see what's through that portal. Yep. Do -do -do -do. Yep. Da dee. Yeah, da -da. What is this? Uh, chalk drawings? Do you think the Lords of the Underworld get angry that somebody can just enable God Mode and come down with a safety glock and just gleefully skip across their islands of souls as, like, a vacation? Uh, who am I kidding? What do I care what they think? Whee! Uh, but it all comes out the same way. Doesn't seem like we're actually meant to walk on these other islands. Uh, so that only, uh, that only begs the question, what happens if we go bobbing for Easter eggs in the River of Souls? Yep. That's actually really scary, how it totally muffles the sounds, but we can still hear them. Totally dark, except for a few slivers of light shimmering around us. Horrifying the prospect of falling in, unable to die. I mean... Can't even see my own flashlight. Oh, but I can actually swim to the surface. Okay. Well, I guess that means I might as well just climb on out, right? Yep. Alright, bye, Skeletrax. Thanks for letting me see your house. Next up is PD Cursed Cove. Presumably a spooky little seaside town. And what spooky little seaside town would be complete without a rickety old bar for all the old sailors to shuffle in at the end of a hard night's work and tell their stories about what they saw out on the sea? Uh, this is such a cool atmosphere that I really, really love. I mean, that rotten old wood that you can practically feel the uh, waves lapping at the supports under the floorboards. Yeah, but it looks like everyone cleared out early. Or maybe there just wasn't any alcohol left on the counter and nobody cared to stick around. Uh, but look, we can even see that fog rolling in past the windows. Now well, let's have a look around, shall we? Ooh. Wanted Davy Jones, $500,000. Uh, oh my god, stop that. <laughs> uh, that would be a tall order, I feel like. Uh, then again, it is a lot of money for the time, and, you know, now. I'll tell you one thing, it must take a force at least as powerful as Davy Jones to keep sailors away from a bar. You heard that, right? Hang on, was that just- was that just me hearing things? I mean, I'd stop to listen because there is quite an unsettling ambiance out here. A wind that sounds almost more like a low chorus, but... It's not like it's silent beyond that. I can hear the regular sea sounds. Huh, and look at this town. It's all, like, colonial. All these weird, like, mismatched buildings and all zigzagging alleyways. Ooh, there's a lighthouse. Yeah, we're definitely... Ooh, and there's the beach. All right, well, well let's go have a look at this so-called cursed cove. 
I'm really unnerved by the fact that the steeple of that building is actually quite 3D. I can see the sky through the other side. Actually, uh, this seems like the kind of place where a lantern might be appropriate, right? Uh... Here we are. Just walking these streets, not a soul to be found. And a fog settling over the cove. This is kind of reminding me of uh, Curse of the Black Pearl. I keep thinking I hear s Darwin! Oh, Darwin, there you are, sleeping again. You have an apartment in town, don't you? And you dropped your arm again. That's a real shame that you're asleep, because maybe you could tell me what's going on here. And why I keep hearing what distinctly sounds like footsteps running up behind me in the sand. I'm gonna be honest, this map is actually really giving me the creeps a little bit. With its ambiance, with how much it resembles an actual town. And with the fact that a sound effect like that wouldn't really be noticeable in multiplayer. Oh, this is actually giving me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. You can see these tropical islands uh, out in the distance, uh, probably someplace down in the Caribbean. Uh, maybe from up here we can get a better view? Uh, where, where actually is that lighthouse? Windows we can actually look through. Wow, you know, it's not often you actually get to take a look at the set dressing on a TF2 map. It's not often anywhere looks like a real place, so it's kind of interesting that... Ooh, that such an event gets, uh, gets such a beautiful treatment. And I'm still hearing something following me. Oh, I've got the clock tower up there, seemingly... Seemingly stuck at 10 to 11. But there are lights flickering in the fort up above. Uh, maybe I can try making my way there? Uh, maybe they sounded the alarm and everyone took refuge and me and Darwin are just the only ones who slept through the memo. There's another one of those creatures up there, up in the, uh, up in the ramp leading to the battlements. Oh, there's another one over there as well. I've got to say, that wind coupled with that image and these deserted streets makes this feel a lot more ominous and then a lot less cute. Oh, we're not going to be able to get up there. Uh, let's have a look in some of these other buildings, then. Uh, can we see what's beyond this door? Oh, just barely we can see inside the fort, but you know, it looks like it's been hastily barricaded. I find settings like this so interesting. Because it's like you're taking the mythology and the mysteries of the sea and seeing what happens when it makes its way into port. It's like the kind of thing that would scare an old-timey sailor, the idea that you're not safe even on land. That even if you think you've gotten away, those things in the sea which you've crossed that we weren't meant to know about can still slither their way up on land and take revenge. Or at least claim what's theirs. The silence with all the lights on in the windows is uh, a little unnerving. It suggests that uh, either everyone's gone or that everyone's hiding and afraid to call out to the foolish people they still see walking around below. I'm pretty sure I just heard the sound of a door opening. I'm just so surprised with how creepy this is. It reminds me of all those old tales of missing colonies and cursed ports. 
That's what it feels like. It feels like... It feels like there's a curse on this place or something. A curse of the Black Pearl, some might say. Yeah, probably not. This is a lot more ominous than that. Curse of the Black Pearl was largely comedic, even if a lot of people did die. Oh, wow. Look at all this. It's only when I see things like this that I can imagine this playing out as a TF2 map. Yeah, but it's seeing that dark old tower from this angle that makes me realize this is actually quite a big one as well. Once again, I'm amazed at the level of artistry that's gone into a one-off seasonal Halloween map. Look, we've got the old crane for uh, loading and unloading ships, I presume. A little harbor right there. <laughs> but even still, <laughs> we're in the middle of a Halloween celebration. Jack-o'-lanterns scattered about everywhere, and... Oh my god, I want you! I want you, I want you, I want you, I want you! Ow. Ow. Oh, there's a parrot! Oh, somebody survived all this. Hi, parrot. Hi. Uh, how do I get up here? Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, you don't even fly away or anything. You are so chill. Oh, wow, look how big your tail is. Okay, you stay right there and you stay safe. Anything that tries to grab you up is gonna have a hard time catching you, I'd hope. Now I know why people wanted those things on their shoulders. They're so cool. Uh, alright. Is there... Uh, no, unfortunately, we can't climb the lighthouse. What's down here? I I'm just... You know what I think this is? I think it's making me nostalgic for the line on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disney World. And actually, you know, what's also cool about this is that it's a level of spookiness that I feel like you probably wouldn't even fully appreciate unless you explored it in single player. Uh, oh wow, it's a good thing uh, this place was destroyed evenly on either side. I wonder if we can actually ring this bell. Oh wow, it actually does work! Cool! I wonder what that would actually do in gameplay. I wonder if it wouldn't maybe uh, cause something to happen. Oh, but look at that view. It really is amazing being able to look out to sea, see distant places in the fog, storms forming out at sea. Then again, in a place like this, it's also a little chilling how we're standing here in what sort of passes for civilization, looking out over the dark of untamed wilderness, and wondering what's staring back at us with contempt. Maybe that's exactly what happened here. But, actually though, now that we know that uh, Valve are not above hiding things that aren't accessible without the appropriate game mode, uh, Noclip is going to be a pretty important tool, don't you think? So let's have a look. Eh, nothing in here. What if we go pay one of you guys a visit? Nope, nothing here. Uh, but if we were to, uh, get a bird's eye view, huh? Wow, it's actually kind of a nice skybox. We can even see a tower over there, suggesting another settlement beyond the hill. Uh, but this is kind of disorienting. What if we look below? Yep, that definitely looks like, uh, there's something down there. Oh, there's like a swirling vortex or something. Uh, all right, let's get down here and uh, crash land, I suppose. Skeletrex, you didn't tell me you had a summer home. Uh, Darwin, Darwin, I'll save you, buddy. Uh, here, 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 take my hand. 
I mean, the problem is that you're trapped beneath a grate, so this is really more for comfort than anything. Uh, but take greater comfort in the fact that you don't have lungs and don't need to breathe, so there's really no time limit on this rescue mission. In about 400 years, we're gonna invent ping pong balls, and then we can raise this whole thing to the surface. Alright, sit tight, buddy. I'll bring you some Burger King or something. There he is. Davy Jones. Well, $500,000 is $500,000, so... Alright, you're a ghost. I see we've gone with the Spongebob interpretation of your appearance. Well, I'm fine with that. It's quite a fine uh, adaptation, if I do say so myself. Oh, uh, look. You don't just collect the souls of unfortunate people who wind up down in your domain. You also collect all the sea creatures that reside down here as well. Well, if I can't have your cash, I'll at least learn your ways. I'm really curious to know how your realm works. Like, uh, do they divide up uh, the responsibilities of different locations to different deities? I mean, I guess what I'm really asking is how does one get a place like this? How, how do I get a place like this? How do I become God over people's eternal souls. <sighs> Secrets of the trade, huh? Well, it doesn't... Oh, we can actually go beyond this. <sighs> why do you... Why does this look like it would be like the villain's lair in some kind of unlicensed Little Mermaid sequel? Or even a licensed one with Disney's track record. Ooh, but we can actually explore a little bit as well. Uh, should I be glubbing right now? I'm not moving like I should be glubbing. Okay, not gonna lie. For just a second, I thought you were like some kind of weird hermit crab skeleton. Like a skull with hermit crab legs. I see what's going on now, but it was a funny couple of moments. Just had to share. Ugh. And it looks like the treasures have already been largely looted. Oh, no, no! There's still something in there! I mean, it could just be sand from the look of it, but you're really gonna keep pushing me away? Oh! Oh, these actually bounce us up. Cool! Uh, imagine the fights that could take place in here. It's like a quake arena or something. Woo! And we can even uh, jump in the air to get a little bit of extra height. I'm starting to see what the point of these chests is, right? And they're meant to torture men with uh, their greed. Even if they do manage to make it here, their soul is already gone, and all they'll find is sand. Alright, I'll check your portal in a moment. Will I be pushed away from this one as well? Yep, seems so. All right, well, I suppose I'll be taking my leave, Davy Jones. Please take good care of Darwin, he's a good skeleton. And I hope there's no hard feelings about me attempting to kill and or capture you for money. But, you know, I gave you my card, and if you ever have any need of, you know, an assistant god of the underworld, or even like a low-level torture technician to start with, well, please, please shoot me a line. A literal fishing line, perhaps? I was hoping that a little nautical humor would sway your opinion towards me, but if we're not going to do business, then whatever. Anyway, let's go. Uh. Hey, Davy Jones, what gives? Your thing's busted. Oh, I get it. Ha ha. I presumed in my mortal arrogance that I would be able to meet you on even ground, and as a result, you've trapped my immortal soul forever, right? Well, okay. I can live with that. No big deal. I mean, hey, I like the underworld. It's a cool place. We've got a swirling vortex, dead fish, and my buddy Darwin, so I'm just gonna go chill with him if you don't mind. Darwin, I have a plan. Yeah, we're just gonna be hanging out over here, so you can, like, look in whatever direction you want. I think that guy over there is trying to make a run for it over the drop-off, so, you know, maybe do it that, Darwin. Okay, here's the plan. I'm gonna hold on to you, right? Alright, and then we will go to the map browser, which he does not know about, because it's kind of a meta strat, and... Doop, 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 doop. Yeah, that guy is booking it. You should probably, like, send the Kraken or something. Alright, Darwin, you ready? Ha! Psych, loser! 
It would seem that the use of our meta-godproof escape strategy has led us to PD Farmageddon. And did I see your eyes move just now? Was that a thing? Oh, they are! Look at you! Uh, you've got the most chill face ever, but... You are not packing chill inventory. What are you guys planning? Uh, maybe What's you guys... You've never seen a live pumpkin before? No, I haven't! Oh my god, it talks! Look, you're not making a pie out of me, alright? Nathan Lane? What are you, some kind of looking at pumpkins guy? <laughs> okay, yep, yeah, this is Valve humor. That really is Valve humor to mix, like, comically childish with actually fairly disturbing. I've got all these cow pelts being used as rugs, and one very bloody chainsaw that I'm going to assume is used for the slaughter of cows, or at least dismemberment, although that's not much of a happy thought, just happier than the alternative. V -v -v. Apparently they slaughter them here as well, and treat them with some probably none too healthy preservatives. Imagine the horrors that are just beyond that door. Now, here's something I actually hadn't considered before. Not only have I never seen a cow pelt laid out in this way, it actually kind of looks like a Rorschach test, doesn't it? Well, that's what they get for appearing in all those stupid milk commercials. You know, I have to say, I've always had a soft spot for horror and spookiness taking place on a farm. And maybe it goes back to my time as a kid looking at haunted attractions on that Haunt World site, uh, which I previously covered in one of my creepy internet nostalgia videos. And there were so many farms that just, like, seasonally offer things like haunted hay rides, even haunted attractions. And even though they operate as farms year-round, some of them actually went pretty extreme with it, having costumed actors leaping out of the cornfields, waving chainsaws around. I don't know. They always looked like they... Made hay rides interesting to nine-year-old me, which is quite a feat to achieve. Oh, but I love this. This is just... While the other ones were more like haunted forests, haunted, like, nautical stuff, this is just fall. We've got dead grass and leaves. The sound of a, an owl hooting off in the night. Even the sky still got that orange glow, suggesting that the sun is just dipping below the horizon. With all this ambiance, I can practically smell the giant stacks of hay. Oh, this is taking me straight back to third grade. Look, we've even got the rows of corn off in the fields. Uh, stretching off infinitely from the look of it. And all the giant pumpkins we can eat. Badlands Biggest Pumpkins. Okay, speaking of... Oh my god, it's breathing. And that is not pumpkin juice. Oh, feed me, Seymour. That's exactly what you want, isn't it? That thing's not even going to try to harvest you. That's for mincing up your food, isn't it? Not for sale. Does that blood perhaps belong to the uh, helpless farmhand who was instructed to put that sign up around you? <laughs> you know, Valve really do go above and beyond for their Halloween maps, don't they? And looking at the looking at the page, there's actually a ton of them. Oh, truly incredible how much dedication they have to the craft. I think I know what these things are for now. Oh, look, it's all leaking out from yet another uh, garage door of horrors. Now, I can't tell if those glowing bulbous orbs are eyes, but they certainly feel like they are. A 360 degree head. Now, there's a novel thought. 
And it seems like though you appear self-contained at first, those roots are capable of growing even more of you, aren't they? <sighs> you guys might have celebrated too soon. <laughs> Bless you, Trump Pumpkins, 13 cents a pound. Now this is something that's uh, certainly been done in fiction before. But I love the idea of some farmer's pride and joy, the ultimate miracle of agriculture, eventually becoming this all-consuming thing that just takes over their life for the worse. In this case, causing the barn to basically collapse around it in places, all the staff gone missing after trying to uh, feed and interact with it. But at this point, in for a penny, in for a pound, and... You've got to bring it food one way or another. And there's only one kind of food it'll accept. Well, uh, let's have a look at uh, some less horrifying things, such as the opposing team's base. <laughs> I like to imagine these as, with the pettiness of TF2 politics, two opposing farms that are just competing over whose land this thing is on. Oh, look, we've even got, like, the old-style truck. Ah, oh, that is so interesting. Uh, missing yellow tow truck. If found, please contact Alliance Towing. Oh, it's not an opposing farm. This is the farm house. Uh, seems like someone in this family's past also had a pretty prideful catch. Uh, some kind of flounder straight out of dredge. My beloved Miss Pancake. Well, it is a little pancake. I get it. It's a child of the corn. <laughs> no, seriously, I really do love that. Uh, we are not going to be able to make our way through here uh, unless we have awesome powers. You know, maybe there were some things we just weren't meant to see. Oh, look at you over there. You know, that's an image I'm only now paying mind to. The image of only the legs and lower body of a scarecrow illuminated by the jack-o'-lanterns which surround it. This pumpkin patch almost looks like rows of graves, doesn't it? Like you bury people and their souls inhabit the scarecrows and the pumpkins. And then again, I wouldn't put anything past this uh, seemingly quite unethical uh, business. Can I say that one of my favorite things about this map so far is this skybox texture? These pitch black clouds overhead, but being able to see the light poking out on the other side where it's more sparse? And it just leaves that dull brown haze over the cornfield. Leaving all these trees and silos silhouetted against it. This map has just got the feeling of fall down perfectly. I remember leaving school on days like this and <laughs> it's the genesis of creepy and comfy in me. It looks like somebody tried to drive through that field. Hope, uh, hope they've got the money to pay for the lost product. Look, it's even got the, uh, it's even got the one crow pecking at its shoulder. It's too dark to tell if its head turns to face me as I move, but somehow that's still the impression that I get. Uh, now over here, didn't I see... I, I thought I saw some, uh, newspapers on the wall that I could maybe read? Uh, there's another for the missing yellow truck, uh... Something to missing livestock? A local farmer claims record-sized pumpkin grown on his farm. Is there perhaps more information up there? Oh wait, here's a headline they were probably really proud of. Still no trace of lost toxic waste. Still no trace of lost toxic waste. Still no trace of lost toxic waste. Yeah, somebody can do something with that. Uh, but preferably not with the toxic waste itself. I guess all that's left is to go, uh... Investigate all Audrey to herself, right? I feel like maybe we can do something, like set this harvester moving forward. Uh, but I can't see anything I could potentially interact with. Uh, what happens if I try to pop a few shots at you? 
Okay, well, as expected, that did nothing. Okay, science learned. Uh, oh, it's almost like the music we've been hearing over the entire map is emanating from you yourself. Like there's some kind of call from another world coming out of you. You're not just a product of science gone wrong, are you? Still, on an emotional level, I can certainly see why a farmer might grow attached to such a being. And it needs food. I'm happy to be a part of it! I don't know what I expected. You know, you're honestly way more impressive than just a really big pumpkin. I mean, you've created, like, actual sentient life here. Sentient life which has, uh, apparently, extreme political views, but maybe all you're trying to do is take out the competition in that barn, and to be honest, you'd be doing the world a favor, I think. Were you the pumpkin inspector? I mean, if there was ever a need for one. Hey, happy Halloween or whatever. All right, cool. <laughs> I should make that like uh, I should make that something that can be played like on the Discord. Uh, can you do that? Can you have custom sound? Oh, uh, whatever. It's time for it's time for no clip. Usually they put alternate worlds down below. Ooh, wait. You've actually got something uh, going beneath. Why would you need that? Can we get you to open somehow? Uh, maybe only in uh, maybe only in the TF2 game mode. But I bet if we were to fall down here or something, no. Yeah. I'm just saying this looks like some place we can go. Well, there is certainly something. Hang on. Doop, 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 doop. We're deep within its bowels. <laughs> Darwin, I'm sorry. The uh, the map changing process, it, it all depends on spawn points, so I don't control where we end up. Uh, you just sit tight. Somebody will be along for you shortly. Oh, wow. We're actually inside the pumpkin itself. Ah, oh, this organic monstrosity. It's like its stomach acid is the river of toxic waste used to feed it to grow it in the first place. It's even got inward-facing teeth. This thing is so friggin' cool. Uh, but it's also got the anomalous property of being quite a bit bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. And it's got a heart. A heart means that it can love and also be killed. Or suffer cardiac arrest, or a number of other problems. Okay, well, let's have a further look around, and then we'll see just what we can do about this thing. Uh, <laughs> apparently people have had enough time down here to build walkways and bridges. Uh, just the thought of a society trying to survive down here sounds like something that might be in, like, some kind of extended SCP story. No way. Hang on. <laughs> uh, looks like you took a wrong turn at Albuquerque, eh? Oh, look, you even got signs instructing people how to feed you. All right, look, first things first, we'll try this the diplomatic way, all right? Let no one say that I didn't extend an olive branch. Yep. So you do have the ability to send us right back out in exchange for an offering. Okay. I can't call myself a true Halloween aficionado if I kill this thing. I mean, honestly, all it wants is to feed and it deserves to live. So I think I'll just be moving on now. They really have grown something beautiful. Not only a crazy organism, but a crazy world within that organism. And maybe an organism which has something to teach us as well. If this flesh and toxic waste-eating freak of nature can learn to 
Maybe, love. That hasn't been established yet, but also create a sick pocket dimension where we can store all our stuff and have, like, a sick game room with foosball and everything? Then maybe we can, too. I love you, pumpkin creature. And I'll feed you the world if I have to. Oh, look at that. Just the silhouetted image of a slowly tilting ferris wheel. Uh, occasionally speeding up a bit, that actually jump scared me. Just amid the uh, swirling purple fog that surrounds this place. And while the set dressing is all the typical Halloween spookiness, although uh, it seems that scarecrow comes equipped with the Slenderman gear. The ambiance of this seems so much more hostile and oppressive. I'll be honest, I was primed to be a little bit more spooked by this one, and it actually caught my interest simply because of the name. While the other ones we've explored tonight were revamps of existing maps or puns like Farmageddon, something goofy like that, you know? This one was titled simply PL Terror. That's the kind of title you expect this to be like the weird creepypasta one that doesn't feel like it belongs there. Oh, but look at the size of that moon. It's almost like it's been coming towards us the entire time, and now it's finally here. I can't help but be reminded of one of my favorite Local 58 videos. Is this like leaving the house in Beetlejuice? I get the feeling this isn't supposed to be this way. Hang on. <laughs> human crab. I suppose even a place like this is not devoid of humor. Alright, well... I guess we should... Uh, get going. Huh, this whole map doesn't seem to want to function like a normal map. I did spawn here, it's not like I no-clipped into this area. Uh... But then again, isn't that very creepypasta of it? Not behaving normally? Making it feel like I've almost got to break the game just to penetrate it because I was never meant to be here. Man Manor. Then again, this looks pretty familiar. Have I actually been on this map before? No, it may be a different take on Man Manor. But I have not been to this one. This is just the uh, cheap facade version, is it? I've been to the real one, and to be honest, it's actually a lot like this. Just, you know, more spooks to be found within. Uh, but as with the other ones, I'm actually finding this to be quite a bit bigger than I was expecting. Uh, the advertisement for the human spy crab, the ferris wheels in the distance, and all these dark spires in the fog. It almost feels like this is supposed to be some kind of, like, attraction or something. What's over here? Uh, another pit to the underworld. Once again, this seems so... I mean, it's entirely possible that things are glitching out because I'm playing it in Gary's mod, but it, it just seems so, like, weirdly broken. Which is also extremely off-putting. Look at this. It's, like, bizarre. Oh, this door to the red base is working. Okay, I legitimately did not expect to see something human-shaped. Okay, I actually braced myself because after the talking pumpkin, we know that proximity triggerables are a thing. Hang on, let's uh, not be a horror protagonist. Let's just, uh, there we go. That was distinctly a metal clank. I really hope that was a ricochet exiting you and coming out somewhere inside the cold storage. Uh, but let's have more of a look around. Let's get out of here as soon as possible, that's for sure. Hope you don't mind if I use you as a step stool, do you? Look at that! 
that, now that is what I call hostile architecture. <laughs> it's like those two windows above are acting as its eyes. I wonder what kind of TV a dish like this picks up in a place like this. The fortune teller. Oh, I see. Miss Fortune Teller. Uh-huh, what a clever pun. This map is genuinely terrifying. What are you doing with your tone? Uh, well, let's try and head over there, I guess. Uh, even the twisting towers that have been present in all these maps seem to be twisting ever more. Oh, you won't let me through here? I've got something to say about that. <laughs> you know, I've seen a lot of parody safety signs. This is probably the funniest one I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I see. This must be the infirmary. And this man's been infected with Yetiism. Uh, but still no way to reach that so called misfortune teller. Oh, look, it's. Almost like a black pearl or something inside a glass case. Uh, by the way, interesting that uh, the name Black Pearl came up twice in two different contexts in this video. But a pit separating us. What happens if we were to get over there? Oh, I get it. It's meant to be like a crystal ball. But I get the feeling that uh, in actual gameplay, something would appear in here. <laughs> what is it about a f faux creepy carnival that somehow circles back around to being actually creepy? Like, I've just always gotten that vibe. When it comes to carnies, it's like, they've got that front-facing side that's meant to scare you in a fun way, yeah, but you always get the impression that there's more real horrors lurking just beneath the surface. It looks like the ticket booth is closed until further notice. Fine by me. Kind of interesting how with TF2 map architecture, where it is actually meant to be played on, they kind of have a tendency to fit rooms into hallways. It's almost liminal in a way. What is that pit? Oh, I was actually jump scared by the gargoyle sitting above the clock tower. I was almost re-jump scared by the swinging pendulum just beneath it. And yet another of those fortune teller booths. I wonder if they don't maybe do something in sync with each other. Alright, now what is this? Whoa! This feels like the kind of sight Lovecraft would have written about. Now that and minorities in his hometown. All right, uh, at a certain point, I'm filled with dread at the fact that we will have to be jumping down there in VR, meaning the death may be fake, but the stomach dropping is surely real. All right, well, that, that'll be probably among the last things we do. Not an exit, unless you're a go-getter and want to make it one. I see what you mean. You really would have to be a go-getter, like some kind of uh, rocket-jumping soldier, or sticky-jumping demo-man, or no-clipping me. How? Oh, hey, look at that. Guess that makes me a go-getter, huh? Let's continue. <laughs> the pitiful child man. I did not give you permission to use my likeness. <laughs> the missing link between man and child. You know, as this joke becomes more rounded, I start to think that it's even funnier that the spy crab is <laughs> considered a freak in this show. I'm noticing a number of these dark boxes. 
places which seem like uh, we can access, but just barely can't, which, from what we've seen tonight, is leading me to wonder if they're not maybe exits from some other world. Another world which each of these maps has thus far had. <laughs> the bearded pyro? Actually, you know, I thought that one was kind of lame at first, but it actually is exactly as inexplicable as they make it out to be. That's kind of the most amazing one yet. Uh, but we're right back around to here. Why is it that portraits hanging high above me is actually sort of vertigo-inducing specifically? Let's be real, I'm just killing time until I know I have to jump into that pit. <laughs> but I know it's going to screw up my stomach and eh, I'm just putting it off. Ooh. Yeah, it looks like red team actually has a pretty nice start compared to blue. Since, you know, their doors don't even work. But I do have to wonder what's going on in the mind of someone who puts an entire wall as a painting of a desolate landscape. I wonder what they'd be thinking as they stare at this in contemplation. Well, back to the pit with us. It's like this whole thing takes place in a freak show in the eye of some haunted storm. Like this place exists in its own little bubble that keeps others out and those who end up here in. Of course, there is always my way out. Yep. I was not expecting that sound. I also wasn't expecting to survive. Uh, even light can't penetrate this darkness. Once more, real glad I have no clip. Oh no, is my god mode still enabled? That was the worst mistake of my life. Let's actually see what we can see up here if we no clip. Oh, by the way, I got out. Y you don't need to hear the story, I just did. Uh, yeah, these uh, invisible walls, they don't always end where you think they do. <sighs> you're, you're going the wrong way. You're trying to tunnel out of your grave, you're going the wrong way. Do you, like, not feel gravity? Okay, once more, this is feeling even more cursed. This is not an image you'd expect to see from TF2. Like, it's not even goofy gore. This is, like, genuinely disturbing. Especially not knowing the helmets hanging over your heads, whose eye this actually is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're missing one. Oh, that's creepy. I just realized this kind of implies, doesn't it, uh, that the scout decided to take his revenge. This map has a story after all, doesn't it? Even without the scripted events. <laughs> you look like you failed to scare the horror away, but you, know, you still had enough life in you to bear witness. All right, let's do this right and free dive. Yeah. And whoa. Ooh, okay, it looks like there is perhaps something. Uh, but it's not directly below like normal. We've missed it entirely. Oh no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, try to land where I think it would start us. Whoa. Okay, be ready for doom mode. I mean, of course, I'm not worried. I mean, I've never met an afterlife I couldn't best and get my way out of, but, uh... Still, the floor is literally lava. Oh, 
Oh, right, I almost forgot. He carries a club made of lava. Aw, oh, Skeletrex, you're just everywhere I'm going tonight, aren't you? What is that up there? Like, glowing crystals in this old dark house that's seemingly perched itself on an island down here. Our flashlight's not doing anything that far. Uh, will taking shots at them do anything? No, it's not to be. Oh, look, lava falls. And all these screams from all around. Oh! Okay, well, only one thing to do. Dive, 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 dive down its throat! Ooh. And if we weren't careful, we could have ended up going straight back to him. I'm sorry I pirated Mall Cop. I'll never do anything like it again. After seeing that afterlife, I'm a changed man. Of course I'd be back and ready to flank you! Uh, now that I can clearly see that- Oh, wow, Skeletrex came- Skeletrex came locked and loaded. He's got a pair of ghosts armed with rocket launchers. Do I even need to explain why that is both the funniest and most baller thing I've ever seen in my life? Okay, well, Skeletrex, you've gained at least a little bit of respect for me. And while it doesn't do anything to lessen our blood feud, I can at least acknowledge the coolness. You die. Uh, I guess not. Huh. <laughs> All the nightmarish imagery and sounds on this map, and, uh, up there we've just got a cute little ghost. Hey. Beep beep. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you for joining me for more haunted TF2 maps, or at least Halloween TF2 maps. And wow, I'm just so impressed with the level of detail and just reverence for the holiday that is present in these maps. They're all so different and varied with such deep Easter eggs. Maybe not even Easter eggs, maybe they're integral to the actual gameplay, but either way, it's a lot of effort. These maps feel like they're not afraid to take all the crazy and out there ideas that the developers might have had and not only implement them into the design of the map, but actually execute them to the fullest. I mean, sure, any map could have, like, as a skin, the set dressing of a crazy pumpkin in the middle, <laughs> but to actually have, like, a talking pumpkin, the ability to end up in this pumpkin's, like, pocket dimension, where all kinds of other crazy stuff is going on, the ability to actually get sent to Davy Jones' locker, and I just think it's so cool to have all that be the case while still functioning as a multiplayer map and also being genuinely spooky while unironically looking like Party City vomited all over the place. That is how you do Halloween. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try any of these maps out for yourself, just install TF2 and they'll be in your Garry's mod. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.